This week, we've got new tools from DeWalt and Makita, tools and stuff rubs my nose and more tools I can't have, and Jim puts a fake up against the real deal. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. Today's episode is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool, Pro Tools, Pro Service at the best prices at ohiopowertool.com. And Ego, power beyond belief. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob, and we've got a ton of awesome Power Tool news and reviews you won't want to miss this week, starting with some new tools, specifically this little fella. This is the new DeWalt DCS 512B Extreme 12 Volt Max Brushless, Cordless, Tackless, Bluetoothless, Laserless. You get the idea. Five and three eighths inch circular saw. This is the first circular saw in the popular and powerful Extreme 12 Volt series from DeWalt, making this a welcome addition to everyone on the platform. It will be available this August for $139 as a bare tool, which seems reasonable to me. I'll be interested to see if it's powerful enough to make most of us happy. Makita also announced several new tools this week. Well, one tool and a bunch of very welcome accessories. First up is this guy, the new Makita CBU-01Z 36 volt brushless blower from their Connected series, which powers its tools with its stylish and comfortable backpack. Which means you're only holding 5.7 pounds in your hands, which is super nice. The new blower boasts 622 CFM at 157 miles per hour, delivering up to 80% more blowing force than gas blowers who blow 80% less. Powerful stuff. It also has a cruise control lever with a variable speed trigger, a three-stage telescoping nozzle, and it looks great with a mullet. The new blower is available now for $379.99. Makita also announced a bunch of new X-Lock accessories for their grinders, including diamond blades, flap discs, grinding and cutoff wheels, and wire cut brushes. These also arrived this month as well. Moving on to tool reviews, Dave over at Man Caver Tools wanted to see how Makita's 36 volt X2 Recip saw held up against the Milwaukee Super Sawzall, so he did what came natural and cut through stuff. A lot. He was quick to admit that the Milwaukee has an orbital feature, which is pretty significant when you're racing through wood, but like he says, It is not Milwaukee's fault if the Makita does not have an orbital feature. Fair enough. Now, I know that anyone familiar with these two saws is going to tell you that the Milwaukee will probably win, but there's more to this. If you look closely, you'll see Dave uses Milwaukee blades. Now, I'm no conspiracy theorist, but I've been told behind closed doors at Milwaukee that they specifically designed their blades to perform poorly in Makita's. I'm just saying. Tools and Stuff continued his petty feud with me by sharing another Makita tool this week that I can't have. Screw you, dude. Cool tool, but screw you. This time it's the all new Makita LXT series multi-tool with Starlock Max, continuing Makita's participation in all things Bosch, which is good for everyone. Compatible with all Starlock, Starlock Plus, and Starlock Max blades, but only those blades. He doesn't just put the new multi-tool to work, but compares it to a couple of his older brothers and comes away with some interesting thoughts. The most interesting of which is a suspicion that an XGT version isn't far behind. Todd over at Project Farm is testing hoses this week. I know you're gonna watch it, I know you'll enjoy it, and if you're like me, you'll begrudgingly go and buy a new hose. That guy is causing real friction in my marriage. Bill over at Sparky Channel got our first look at the new Makita 7-in-1 Conduit Reamer with ECX bits. When we first announced this tool, I was surprised by how many of you left positive comments about the Reamer, but after watching Bill get excited, I finally get it. Our buddy Tim over at Shop Tool Reviews was posting a new tool review every 20 minutes this week, it seemed, including a full test of the new Flex Reciprocating Saw, which included a full 50 cut test through 4x4, all on a single battery. Did you guys ever watch a tool review and think to yourself, thank goodness, now I don't have to do that test? Me too. Tim also reviewed a rigid 18 gauge brad nailer, a Ryobi lawnmower, and tore apart a Makita XGT impact driver. I have no clue how he finds the time, but we appreciate it. Last of all, Jim at Philly Fixed finally sold out this week. The trader took a free tool, throwing all of his credibility out the window. But don't get too worried. The free tool came from Banggood, which likely brought down the value of his home, so it's kind of a wash. The ripoff tool in question is a poor copy of a Makita, so Jim naturally tested it against the real deal. Don't need to tell you who won. The review is still fun to watch and worth the click, if only for Jim's latest creative intro, which alone is worth the price of admission. You know, I was going to use that story to segue into a tool talk about tool reviewers accepting free tools, but I'm not entirely sure you guys actually want to fight over that. If so, let me know in the comments and I might bring it up later. 
Instead, for today's Tool Talk, we're going to discuss a significant survey that was released by DeWalt this week. They commissioned a poll of 2,516 homeowners in the United States and asked them about plans to renovate their homes. And a staggering 70% are planning or considering a major renovation in the next six months, which is great for lumber mills, who I hear are having a hard time finding space to put their fat stacks, and really good for tradespeople. As a matter of fact, of those who have already talked to a contractor, nearly 60% must wait at least three months just for the work to begin. The rest of the article focuses on this high demand for tradespeople and the shifting perspective in the public eye. They note that 70% of homeowners believe their child could make a good living as a professional home contractor, which is true. So this week, I wanna hear your ideas. We have a weekly platform here at Belts and Boxes that aims to promote the trades through power tool news, education, and entertainment. So how can we better use this platform to reach young people and show them just how amazing a path in the trades could be? I look forward to your replies. Now, last week, we got a close look at a secret Makita saw, which you can watch right here. I want to thank Ego and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. If you like this episode, do me a favor and give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, I hope that you subscribe. Have a safe weekend, and I'll see you next week.